Hi everyone, welcome back to the Energy channel where we talk about all things related to power. In today's video, we'll discuss some tips and tricks for DIY enthusiasts who want to build more effective nickel-based battery packs. Please note that even though these tips are helpful to know, you can still encounter some unexpected problems, such as unmatched cells or voltages, thermal runways, or even a fire risk if it's a lithium-based battery pack. This is why we highly advise seeking professional help or battery experts like Tenergy to make the pack for you instead. Now let's get into some tips for building effective battery packs. The first thing you want to check before building your battery pack is the cell's voltage. You need to make sure that each cell's voltage is as close to each other as possible. At Tenergy, we keep the voltage for each cell within 2% or 0.1 voltage before making a battery pack. If your cell's voltage aren't close to each other, you might need to level them out by charging or discharging each cell. We highly recommend using new batteries that are bought from the same brand with the same voltage, capacity, and chemistry. Our goal is to keep them at the same level since it directly affects the battery pack's performance. Another advantage of using new batteries is that they often come in the same batch, which means their voltage and internal resistance are very similar to each other already. In most cases, all you need to do is double check their voltage to make sure there isn't a defective one. Then you can start building the battery pack right away. Some people may try to reuse the cells from old battery packs and only replace the bad cells with new cells. You can try that too. However, just keep in mind that old cells most likely have a different capacity, internal resistance, and voltages. Mixing them will reduce the overall performance of the battery pack and the old cells can get overdrained and damage the entire pack. You may find yourself having to build another battery pack more frequently than using all brand new cells. Another tip before getting into soldiering is to keep the battery at room temperature. As you already know, high heat reduces the battery's performance. Using warm or hot cells for soldiering will amplify the stress on the batteries. So if you find the cells are too warm or hot after charging or being outside in warm weather, we recommend bringing them into a cool, dry location and waiting for them to cool down before soldering them. The next tip is about the metal strips that are used to connect the cells together. There are two types that you can find in the market, which are the pure nickel strips and nickel plated steel strips. Although nickel plated ones are cheaper, we recommend choosing the pure nickel strips. It has a much lower electrical resistance. Using the pure nickel type helps the battery pack release less heat during charging and discharging, hence extending its lifespan. One extra note when building nickel based battery packs, generally PCBs or protection circuit boards are not a hard requirement. A PCB is used to prevent the pack from common issues such as overdraining or overcharging. You only need it when building lithium based battery packs such as lithium ion, lithium iron phosphate, or lithium polymer battery packs since these chemistries are more sensitive to overvoltage, overdraining, and overcurrent. Let's talk about the methods connecting the cells together. There are two common ones that DIY enthusiasts commonly use, which are soldering and spot welding. Both have pros and cons, so you'll need to decide on your own to see which one suits you more. The main benefit to soldering over spot welding is the cost. A soldering iron costs much less than a spot welder. You can get a decent soldering iron for around $20-$30, while a spot welder typically costs anywhere from $200-$300. to $300. It's a lot to invest in a spot welder if you're only planning to build one or two battery packs. However, the spot welding method is still quite common because of its efficiency. It can connect the cells together faster without adding a lot of heat compared to soldering. Also, users don't need much experience to use a spot welder. The soldering method requires a lot more practice to prevent overheating and damaging the cells during the process. One tip that we recommend when using this method is to buy cells that already have tabs attached like these and before connecting it. Make sure to fold these tabs both on the top and the bottom to avoid unnecessary contact with other cells and prevent short circuits. Then place the cells in the right configuration and secure them using either a battery holder or hot glue. When connecting the cells, you need to unfold the tabs that are needed like this, and then solder them on instead of the cells directly. This will reduce the risk of exposing the cells to the heat. Depending on your skills and budget, you can choose which method you prefer. The last tip is to run one or more cycles of charging and discharging the battery pack after it's built. Remember to set the rest time to be at least 20 to 30 minutes to avoid overheating your battery pack. Doing this helps the pack match each cell with similar capacity and voltage or state of charge, so it can reach its best performance. And that concludes the tips and tricks for building a battery pack. However, in case of battery packs that doesn't work and you don't know what went wrong, here are a few extra steps you can follow to troubleshoot it. First, check its output voltage to make sure all the connections are done properly. If it includes a PCB, you may need to charge it for a few seconds. Since this one is a good battery pack, the voltage is at 6.3 volts now. 
but let's pretend the voltage didn't show up in the meter and continue the next step. The next step is to measure the voltage of each cell or series to check if they are in the same voltage or state of charge. Sometimes during the connecting cells process, especially using the soldiering method, you might accidentally damage one or more cells. And that's most likely the cause of the pack's failure. But if the cells are in good shape, then the problem may lie among the connection points between the cells, between the pack and the connector, or between the PCB, the cells, and the connector if the battery pack has a PCB. The connection can be loose or incorrectly wired. That's all for today's video. We hope you've learned something useful. If you want us to build a custom battery pack for your device or application, feel free to either make a request on our website or via email or even call us. We're happy to help. Check out this video to learn how to order one from us. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel if you want to see more content like this. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.